Hello friends, in the last video we talked about form processing. So in the last video we stopped here and now it is a demo time. We will go to Eclipse and we will create a HTML form, uh, a login form which will contain uh, uh, username password to text field and one submit button then we will see how we can submit this form information that means username and password as part of submit so we will see both post and uh, get method of posting the form input to the servlet so here in the eclipse demo we will see how to use do get and do post both will have a ditto same code so since the code is the same the best method to handle that is a service but here for a demo purpose we are going to paste the same code in do get and do post and we will explore how the post and get method works now we will open uh, eclipse So here I am using the same workspace which we used in the previous demo. So here you are seeing uh, servlet examples. We already have two servlet first servlet then initialize parameter now we will create our third servlet so before we go to servlet let us look at the login form so this is our login form here we are using the method as get and the action we are specifying it as a servlet form input so that means this is the servlet we are going to create then we are using a field set so this is just to group the controls here we have two input control one is uh, uh, type is text and another one's uh, type is uh, password so the key here is the name name is username and password so this is the one we will use in servlet to know what user input is given on this particular control so based on the control name we will retrieve the um, data filled in by the user so we have to fill then we have a submit button so first let us uh, see how it will look so this is the form we are going to display as part of the while fly at present i am displaying it from the local uh, folder I mean the local file system all right now we will just copy this HTML content let's go to Eclipse here I am selecting the web content under our servlet examples web project so if you want so we already created this and if you want a quick demo so click new other so dynamic quick project so from other you can choose from here or you can go for file new and from here you can pick dynamic web project then give your project name here so the project name is servlet examples and then you can accept all the default now after creating the project right click here in the web content then choose new html file 
So under the file name, specify a login name. Then click next. So here a lot of template available. Here I am uh, picking uh, new HTML5. Then I'm clicking finish. So now we will replace this with our uh, HTML file which we copied from here. So the HTML content is ready. We know how it will display. We executed this from the uh, local file system. So let us leave it as it is. Now we will go to servlet farm input. So we will create this servlet. So I just uh, right clicked the web project name, then I am choosing new servlet. Here, package name, we are choosing uh, tube.codingexamples.servlets. So this package already contains other servlet. Let me be create a new one. We will give name as servlet form input. Then we will click uh, next. Click next here. Here we want to handle both do get and do post. Alternatively, you can use a service method. So the service is the base and from this service only the container will choose whether to uh, transfer the call to do post or do get based on, based on the uh, um, data submission method. So form data submission method will be get or post. So based on that service method will call do get or do post. So in this example I am not going to um, override service but if you need you can um, remove these two check mark and select service method and write the same code what we are going to write here on do get and do post. So both will be the same code you can handle that in service also. So I'm uh, clicking uh, finish here. So this will create a servlet for us. IDE will create a servlet. Now we will do some uh, cleanup code. Alright, now we will start writing the code. First we will write the code on do get. Okay, first we will assume that um, we are not going to do any database validation here. So we will assume uh, the DB contains only two user, user1, user2. Then password for user1 is pwd1 and the password for user2 is pwd2. That means here we are going to hard code and we will say validation is passed when the correct username password is received. So as part of this do get method we will use the request object and we will get the um, the form control values filled in by the user. So we saw that the HTML form contains two fields. HTML form contains two fields and we will um, get those field values. So here first we are defining a string out response so this is to send the um, HTML output to the um, browser so from where the request is inbound the request is uh, inbound from the HTML form so 
to the same browser session we will send the html output for that we are declaring a variable then we have a boolean variable which tells uh, the login is a success or it's a failure here if you see we are using the request object from there we are making call to get parameter and here we are referring the username if you look at our login.html this is the input type and the input type name is username so here we are asking get parameter username that means whatever user enters in this html text field so that will get retrieved by this request.get parameter method so we are storing that under a string variable username the same goes for the other html field get parameter and name if you see password and the input type here is not text it is password that means whatever you type here in this uh, uh, text box like field the characters appears like a star or a uh, dot next in the do get method since we have the values entered by the user now it will be a normal java code so here what we are doing we are checking whether username is user1 and if you see here we are hard coding it so the input field should be either user1 or user2 that means we consider that username actually exists so this hard code value usually comes from the database so any server side program that will uh, take the form field then it queries the database then it confirms whether username exists similarly then here we are checking whether uh, the password entered is pwd1 so first if the text box is, contains user1 and the password field is pwd1 then we will say that it's a valid login and in the out response we say user1 logged in also we said logged in value as a true this boolean we set to true the same goes for user2 so you if user in the username input field if user typed either user1 or user2 that's a valid user when user typed user1 the password should be pwd1 and if it is for user2 it should be pwd2 so in that case we consider it as a valid login all right so now this login after this snippet 2 and if you see we started snippet here this first if then this one is second if in snippet 3 we will say login is a succeed or not so we already have a valid out response when login was a success so if login is a failure then we form our out response we say either user username does not exist or password is wrong so that's what uh, here we are forming as part of the out response so now everything is ready so that means our out response is ready now we will go ahead and form our output html so this is our print writer object just like what we did in our previous servlet we are retrieving the print writer using this print writer we can write our response to the waiting browser so the browser submits the form and it waits for the response right so here we are forming the response and we are sending it back to the form uh, yeah we are sending the html to that form which submitted the data so here we are saying text.html these are all just a html content html body h1 and inside the h1 we found we are outputting our this response so it would say user logged in otherwise 
it may say username or password is wrong after that you, these are all just a closing tag for h1 body and html now since our content is changed and if you see here we have three servlet and which servlet needs to be executed he is decided based on this url parameter so if i open other servlet you can see how the url parameter changes so the url pattern for this uh, servlet is url i mean init param demo and for our first servlet uh, the web servlet attribute contains a url pattern first servlet so when the url contains this signature servlet form input then the request will be routed to this particular java class servlet form input which extends a http servlet then in the do get we had return our code all right now we will first start the servlet then okay it automatically published and it synchronized it also so server is started and you can see that here wildfly server is started and it is synchronized now We can go to our web content and we can execute this login name. Or we can open IE. We can type localhost. So this is the URL for our form input. So zero is missing. Let's execute it here once, then we will take the URL. Maybe I'm missing something there. So instead of login form, I just kept a login name. So that's the mistake I did there. So if you see here, I put a form input. All right, so now there are two session you can execute from wherever you want. Here I will say user one, and I know that password exists, pwd1. Before clicking submit, I will put the other user here also user 2 pwd2 so both will be success that means uh, both are valid uh, um, valid user login all right first let me execute here and if you see user 1 logged in since the method is get here you are seeing the url parameter so this is what we talked about in the slide in the previous video so the username is the name that means the form field name then this user one is the value entered by the user so the second one is the control name pwd and value entered by user is password one so let me just cut these and let's go to our code and let me paste this as a comment then I will remove it and if you see here we are asking for username 
so the username is this one and it takes it from the url parameter so the get parameter uh, which is inbound and it is available in the request so from request we are asking username and it will return um, the value entered by the browser user is user1 so that it will get stored here similarly for password uh, that's the html field name password that is going as a um, uh, url parameter or query string so in the slide i told semicolon right so that was wrong it should be the ampersand so the query strings are separated by ampersand so in the slide i told uh, mr Kenley, semicolon right so password and that returns a value pwd1 and that will get stored here based on that we performed validation so you can see this url parameter only in the uh, get method and if you see here the form method is get and the action is taking place in our servlet and we specified that as a url here now we will submit this also and it says that user2 logged in here if you see user1 logged in now let's go back here we will refresh okay let me let me see at least uh, this will refresh i guess reload okay now this time we will provide a wrong username so the user doesn't exist in the database at all so password i'm typing something and if i click submit it says either user round does not exist or password is wrong so the same goes here as well so if you see how our um, um, so that is processing the form request now what we will do we will just change this method as post so this time you won't see url parameter but um, post will make a call to the do post method so what we will do we will just copy paste the same content so this is what i am saying so if uh, the implementation is a different for do get and do post then it is meaningful to override both do get and do post if implementation is same for do get and do post then it is good to override the service and write the code there here we are simulating the same code in do get and do post just to experiment how the form field works now i changed the method to post now i have to republish it instead of republishing i will just remove then i will restart the server in the meantime i will reload the form also so it says that the page not found because we haven't yet started so so it is started but the web project is not published now we will publish it so right click here and say publish okay first we have to add our uh, web module add then click finish So it says that it deployed servlet examples dot where in server also we are seeing started synchronized and started synchronized. Now 
we will run this run on server next and finish similarly we will reload this page so this time you won't see this web uh, page not found now let's type the valid username user1 pwd1 and when i submit you won't see the url parameter so let me click submit why because now the form field data goes as a request body so that's why you are not seeing that as a url parameter so here we are handling it using the post method so both the method we can submit so this time usually the servlets do post method will come into picture and it is handling so the code is same between a do get and do post so that's all here in this video thank you for watching bye